it's Valerie from Valerie Wallace Fine Arts here in Orno, Maine at 1 o'clock having a free drawing class with everybody out there and um, today we're going to do this bridge and it's a great little watercolor and um, there's two things I like about it. One is I like that it's pretty easy to show three dimensions to this bridge with this little piece that comes underneath here which is neat. Um, and the other thing is, um, I like the colors because it's watercolor, they're very washed out and, um, they're not usually my favorite colors. It's a little bit of work to keep things really pale, but, um, you know, that's if you want to go with what's here and if you don't want to go with what, what's there, then you do whatever you want. The thing I want you to see is, is, um, kind of this first, we're going to do the bridge and we're going to start here and you're just going to come in a little bit. And it's basically, it has a little curve, but if, even if you went straight across, it's not going to matter, okay? The other thing is, is we have these bangs, how, we, you know, it's, they cut in on it. And this is almost, it's not exactly, but it's almost a straight line from here to here, okay? So kind of keep that in mind. We're so, we'll, we'll draw that in a little bit, and um, now you'll know what the point, why I'm doing that. The other thing is this, is this is also one continuous line okay that runs right along and that's because the shoreline I mean the shoreline could change you know there could be little divots in here but you know the river usually just runs in a nice path so it stays pretty straight and that because of perspective it runs right inside like that the other thing I don't want to forget too is that the the reflection of the uh, bridge shows in the water with just a little bit of a curve, kind of like that. So, okay. Um, so let's do it. So grab something. I'm going to use, you know, my trusty reddish brown here that I use for all kinds of stuff because it's kind of this color. But to get a green that's kind of yucky like this, part of it is using the um, the opposite of green, which is red. And in this case, this is kind of a reddish brown, so it works great. Okay. All right, let's do it. So pretty much the bridge is kind of in the middle, is kind of middle top to bottom. We're going to start here. We're going to, what I want you to do is go over, you know, about in the middle, go over here, go in, eh, you know, an inch, whatever, something like that. Give yourself a little mark and do the best you can to go over here and mark the same place. Can you see that? It's a little hard to see. A little hard to see. Okay. I'm going to make it a little darker. You draw as lightly as you can in the beginning because you're going to adjust things as you go along. And part of learning to draw better is learning to draw, just control how hard you, you push down. Can you see it now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Between, it's a little hard for me because I'm a little awkward. Are these pretty even? Yeah. Okay. Between these two dots, I want you to find roughly the middle, okay? And you don't need to go way up unless you want a super curvy bridge. But if you just want just a little bit of a little bit of a rise kind of in the middle, just go up a little bit like this. Okay, by the way, this is I have the name. I don't know. Maybe Peter. I'm not really sure who it is, but whoever did it did a fantastic job. I love it. Okay. So now I have um, just a little bit of rise. And rather than just swoop my way over there and hope that it comes out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go towards this dot. And then I'm going to go towards that dot. Okay. And then when you're done, kind of hold it up before you do too dark, hold it up and see if it looks okay to you. And if it doesn't say, let's see, you know, say I want to go up a little higher here because this is actually a little bit higher. I'm just going to go right now and add on here a little bit. Okay. And that'll be pretty good. Yeah. I want it maybe a little higher on the, the right side. You know, so it's a little, te if, if you're going for what's here, this is a little teensy bit higher than where it is right here. Okay? All right. And then the next thing we're going to do is, I've been trying this all different ways. Um, okay. Right here. All right. Now we're going to do the, We're going to do the curve in the middle. The one thing I want you to think a little bit about if you're using something like a pen or whatever is that. This goes down a little farther on this side than it does here. But I think we should probably do this. So look at this. Don't look at anything else. Just try to look at that shape 
so that that'll help you in your head to be thinking what kind of a curve it is, okay? You do want some bridge from here to here. This might not even be a lot, or else, you know, if you have hardly anything there, you can add on, but you're gonna have, your bridge is gonna fall through. So find about the middle, drop yourself down a little bit like this, and give yourself a dot, and then um, go here, and maybe a little higher here, we're going to give it a little curve. Just do it lightly because you're going to maybe have to adjust things a little bit. Okay? All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's hard to say which which way, which order to go in. But we'll, we'll go, we'll have that. We may need to adjust it a little bit, okay? All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come to the side. We're going to drop this down a little bit. So this is kind of like, you know, if you were walking on there so you don't fall off the bridge, there's going to be, you know, at least, hopefully, stones that are going up to at least your waist. So that when you're going with your little kid, they don't fall over. All right, now what I want to do is the um, this line, okay? And you can draw it all the way across. Not exactly a straight line, so don't worry. If, if, but you're going to go from here, and then let's say this is where we're going to go on our paper here. So you're going to go from this corner, find a spot, an inch or so up. Okay? And then you're heading in that direction. If you don't get it exactly right, don't worry about it, okay? But you're going to go kind of like that. So sketch that in a little bit. Oops, I'm going to draw it down here. Let me see, what did I do? I want here, I want a spot here, I want a spot here, I want one in the middle. I'm go up, and over. Bring this down a little bit. Bring this down. Alright. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to do this bank that's here. Okay? Because it's the river is kind of curving around that bank, it doesn't end up right, it doesn't have a specific spot on the bridge that it touches. But you don't want to start at the top. Come down a little bit and just kind of curve yourself a line that goes up, maybe just beyond that little circle, that little tunnel. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Is this too confusing? Mm -hmm. This is the hardest part right now. If you get through this, it's golden, because all you're going to do is color in pretty colors to look awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's not really much left. Okay? Okay. Okay. I trust you. I got Daphne here with me today. Faithful assistant. Yeah. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work with the, the line of the shore right here that goes under the bridge. And what I was finding is that if I had this, this piece of paper is obviously a lot smaller than this one, but I can still roughly do the proportions the same, um, which is harder if you're sitting outside and you have to figure it out. So it's good to practice this part of it inside and with a piece of paper, and that way when you go outside to do your landscape, you will, you know, not have to, you'll have to just kind of figure out, um, you know, what's in the picture and what isn't, and you won't have to figure out all the other things. So I'm going to go up a little bit more than is on this side. Okay, so whatever I went here, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go a little bit higher. Just don't have this dot higher than this. It won't make any sense. And then I'm going to connect from here to here, like this. Okay? So I'm going to go a little higher here, and I'm going to connect to that um, half circle that's on underneath the bridge. Okay? So this is water, shore, a bank right here, and a bank right here. So this, and then what I want to do is... I want to continue this line just in exactly the same direction it's going. I'm just going to continue this in a little ways. Okay, not past the middle point, though, because that will kind of mess you up. That means, like, don't go from this dot we did at the high point of your half circle. Don't go beyond that. If you did, just erase it, or um, if you did it in something with color, we'll just color over it. So you're going to start at that dot right there, and what you want to do is curve towards that. Okay, so this winds up being 
the underside of your um, underside of your bridge. And however long this line is has to do with how wide the bridge is up above. This is the width of it. So if it's really, really skinny, then it's going to be just a footbridge, right? right? Or maybe it's something you can walk your donkey across. Maybe. Or ride your donkey across. And do you walk your donkey when it has to go out? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean lead it. Yeah, I know. Like if it's all full of goods that you just bought at the market and you need to lead it home because mm -hmm. you needed that space where you were sitting for your basket of goods. Okay. Baskets of goods. Yeah. Or maybe a mule. You're bringing home somebody and you let them ride. Okay. <laughs> like your new bride. Okay. <laughs> so this is what we're gonna do now. Um. You're gonna make a line. Why don't we just use this one and this one? Okay. So we're gonna keep this line. And you're gonna make one that's kind of parallel to that that runs just like this. Okay, and this is the shadow reflection underneath the bridge, okay? And the thing is, is depending on where the sun is or depending on where your view is, it could be a little bit different. So don't worry if it's a little bit different, because that's fine. You just want to have something down there, because this is really what sets up the three-dimensional part of this picture. Okay, good. All right, so the only other thing is kind of this, this bank right here. Bring that up here and maybe over to the side like that, okay? All right. So with, with a picture that at once you, oh, wait a minute, have I done it down here? Oh, no, I haven't, okay. So here, um, I'm going to start with a spot right in the middle. I'm going to continue this line a little bit, but I don't want to go beyond that middle point. And then I'm going to start at that dot, and I'm going to curve it. And then I'm going to make a line that goes like this is pretty much parallel to that. This I'm going to cross over that a little bit more. Okay. Oh, and here we're going to do this. Okay, so... Um, the next thing usually when you're drawing or, or, or painting or whatever is, is to find some of the darkest things that you have on there. Because if you add them towards the end, um, sometimes they're too heavy and they're too, too intense, but it's nice to get them on there in the beginning so that you can kind of work off of those and, and, and um, it also helps to define your picture. So find something dark that you have dark, that, you know, you could use black, you could use dark brown, um, dark green, dark gray, um, um, purple, dark blue, whatever you want to do. I'm going to use, um, I guess I'm going to use, I don't know, I guess I'm going to use my dark brown. I'm tempted to use purple, but I want to, I want, I like the colors in here. It's not my natural color, so it's like, I want to work a little bit harder to get them on there. Okay. So if you squint your eyes at this picture, you can see that there's the dark is here and here and like right along the shoreline and then underneath these trees. That's kind of what we have. We'll do the details on the bridge at the end. So we're just kind of setting everything up. Um, so you want to do this piece right here. Okay. Right in here. And um, especially, you know, around the edges. I don't know if my friend Wendy Shriver is watching today, but happy birthday, if she, if she is. There we go, okay. And we can, and when, we, when you're working with water, especially, even though it's a river, and people think that the river lines ought to run up and down, they run side to side, okay? Mm -hmm. Even waves. Can't guarantee that there's not a way to break that rule, but in general, I would go with it like that. Okay, so we'll do that. That's a dark one of the dark places. We did this as a painting, I think, when I was doing um, paint and sips at what's some. Um, 
the Black Bear Brewery in Orono oh. used to have an Iron Ale. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure we did it there. I like it. But I haven't really done it since then. That was quite a while ago. Okay. The other places where it's dark, you know, we're thinking it's natural. Um, um, we're going to bring a little dark right along the edge where the water meets the, um, the bank. Okay, so then we'll do that over here. And this might sort of continue from here. Um, maybe this one has a little extra down here. So I'm gonna color again, like sort of horizontally. You know, could be shadow, could be reflection. The thing with this is it has a white sky, which happens a lot, whether it's gonna rain or if it's super foggy. I'm thinking this is kind of an early spring you know, kind of overcast day. Um, that's why the greens are kind of in that early stage of coming from being brown to greening up. And um, this thing is right in the way. Other place I want to put this is dark. Um, I'm going to go right along. And in here, if I want, I can. Oh, I know. You might even. Actually, let's let's save that edge of where the bank meets the bridge. We're going to save that for later because we might want to put a little bit of grass there or maybe even a little bit of flowers or something like that. Um, right along here, I want you to kind of draw up and down a little bit. Right over that line you have, kind of like this, and that'll help just make things look a little bit, it's very, very light right here. That'll help to make it look a little bit like um, grass. Okay, and then we'll just bring a little bit of the lines going up, and that's going to be our little bit of woodsy bit going there. Okay. All right, I want to do these trees right here, and one of the things about doing landscapes is realizing that trees aren't one, two, three, four, five trees just all spaced out all over the place. That they become, a, which is really a lot easier when you realize that, that they become a big clump. And, um, and that's all this, that's happening here. I mean, there's no question in our head that this, these are trees and these are trees, but all they are is big globs. They're, I mean, if if you didn't have them attached to the ground, they could be clouds. I mean, it, it, you know, they're just blobs. So um, what I want to do with this is to keep my um, green kind of a little lighter. And, and something like this, I want to say that this is the right color because it's kind of a um, brownish green. But can you see how much darker it really is? Mm -hmm. And if I go with this to color the whole thing in, it's going to change the whole atmosphere. It's not going to be this foggy, you know, early morning in the spring or whatever. So one of the things to do um, with green is to use either white or yellow. This area, this one here, has a, more white in it. It's bluish green, but it also has a lot of white. This one it has more yellow or orange. So what I'm going to do is use this little, it's a little bit of an, uh, um, it's almost an orange yellow. So I'm going to use this. I'll use it second though. So what I want to do with this, instead of not as a ball, but I'm thinking about kind of a curly. It kind of reminds me of like I don't know Dr. Seuss hair. Okay, so kind of you know curly and up and big. You know maybe not to the top of the page, but up there. And then I'm just going to color in this kind of lightly. I am not the master of landscapes by any stretch like I'm not great at it by any means but um, I have been trying to teach people how to do it an easy way that can be fun and satisfying um, for a long time so that's all I'm trying to do I'm not the expert so I have this nice kind of light green on there but when I take my yellow hopefully things 
I'm trying to do too while everybody, same thing as everybody else, is I didn't use um, oil pastels. I've been painting mostly, and I use a lot of um, water-soluble pastels, I guess, but not like this. So for me, it's a good way for me to learn something new, how to do it a little bit better. Yeah, so it's kind of like that, especially if I step away. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, while I'm at it, well, I'll do that later. Um, so the next thing I'm going to, oh, I'll do this tree down here. So here, I want to work over that line. And one of the things I was thinking about is that anything that's natural, there's not so many rules as to like, you know, people will be like, I can't draw, I can't draw straight lines. It's like, well, then a landscape is a great thing because nature, you know, has some straight lines. But I mean, even if you think of a tree as being a straight line, you know, trees can curve and they can lean and bend and all kinds of stuff and they have branches that forks and you know you really don't need to to be able to draw a straight line to do things in nature okay and then the other thing is that a lot of times even man-made stuff um over time nature takes its toll and that starts to like you know, make things not quite so streamlined and straight edged anymore either. So if you do your bridge and it's a little lopsided, that doesn't mean, you know, all it will do is change sort of the feel of your picture to make it seem a little bit like older. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Nothing right. wrong with old, older, old stuff. Nope. Okay. It's all cooler. Right. What'd you say? It's cooler. It's cooler? Yeah. 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 I think it's neat to have that happen. Okay, so what I want to do with these um, trees in the background is that instead of the warm brown, I'm going to go a little cooler and I also want to lighten it up. So I have my nice, my favorite blue. What do they call it in this blue? Turquoise. So these are gonna. I'm gonna put these three colors together. They're gonna. They're gonna do this. These trees in the background. Okay. And what I want you to see is not only do the trees get smaller as they meet up with the, the, these other ones. This is smaller. Okay. And we're gonna get bigger as we go along. But also, it's lighter. And to give depth, you know, you can always use, you know, the fact that things appear smaller as they get away in the distance. But also, the atmosphere comes in and it starts to like, you know, uh, what's the word I want? Make fade. things fade away a little bit. Okay? So if you can do this, if you can really make this lighter, you might not notice it when you're right on top of your picture. It might be just like, you know, it doesn't seem quite right. But when you clip it up on the wall on your refrigerator and you look at it from a distance, you'll be like, wow, look at that. It really looks like it goes off in space. It's cool. All right. Before I forget, though, all right, I'm going to start with the light green, I guess. There is the shoreline here. You don't have to have it. I think if, you know, if you skip it all together, that's okay. The only thing is you got to realize that your, your trees have to start above. If you don't have them here, they're starting up here. All right? Which I guess wouldn't make a lot of difference. Right? Wouldn't make a lot of difference visually, definitely. Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. Um, I'm going to put a little bit in here. I'm just going to keep it on the light side. So I'm just going to make sort of a diagonal line here. I'm going to put a little bit of green there. All right. And then I'm going to start at the small end. It's easier to get bigger, I, I think, than it is to get smaller. And I'm going to go as lightly as I can. And I'm just going to make kind of a wiggly line. One of the things to do if you want to make kind of a looser line is hold, don't hold your pencil. Your, pastel really tightly, hold it looser, you'll lose a little control, even if it's your pencil. If you're using, um, if you're using a pencil, instead of drawing like this, when you want to do something looser, hold it at the end like this, the very end of your, and that likewise, if you're painting or you're drawing and you want to make like careful eyelashes and pupils, don't hold your pencil like this or your paintbrush like this. I wonder why it comes out sloppy, because I've seen it. There you 
there you go. All right, so we'll go up like that. And um, I'm going to go super light here while I'm thinking about it and maybe not even fill it all in. Okay, and I'm using kind of a real like, you know, warm lime green. You know, it's warm because um, it is has a lot of yellow in it. Okay, if it were a cool green, it would be more like maybe even kind of what I have on. A blue or green. Um, what's another blue green? The ocean sometimes. Mm -hmm. Teal. Um, Alright, so I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to go a little heavier over here so that I can have my effect. Easy to start light, you can always get darker, but if you go um, the start on the dark side and get too far with it, then you, you know, whatever. Again, you know, there's there's things to do that might make your picture better, but in the big scheme of things, you know, none of this is really all that important. It's not brain surgery. Don't worry about it. If you're the kind of person that that that's sometimes a hard thing to tell yourself. This is a great, a great way to practice that. But I do see everybody getting better, which is really neat. Part of it is, you know, just repetition, getting in the habit. Again, you won't like necessarily like everything that you do. You might not like everything I'm picking. You might be very particular about what you like to draw and what you want to put your time into. Um, you know. That's fine. But the more you do just just handling the materials and things like that, the better you'll get at it. Right, Dad? Right. You know, and don't, and, and really don't assume that just because you picked up, you know, following a lesson that you're going to be really great at it because I probably can't do your job, right? It would be kind of silly of me to think that I was going to walk in and do your job as, as well as you do, even though I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> you know, or, or, you know, I used to do, I used to do something like that back when I was in high school, like, it's not really the same thing, we practice all the time, so, all right, oh, some of you are way better even though you don't practice all the time, Kelly, all right, so I'm going to take, so you can see what happens when I put this white on here. A white is really a very valuable tool. You think that you don't need it. I didn't think it was important, but it's awesome. And if anybody saw Daphne's great, tremendous biking, wow. which is posted on the um, album of uh, all the people who generously shared their pictures with me, and I put them together on an album, uh, you will see one of, the thi one of the things that she did with her picture is she used a paper that's tinted, so it's very light brown, and so that kind of gave that Viking kind of a color to his skin just to start with. Mm -hmm. And then you use a mostly black, but then you take a little bit of white here and there, maybe in the eyes, um, maybe on the nose and stuff like that to highlight it. It's a kind of a neat trick. So if you can find some colored paper, Give that a whirl sometime. All right. Oh, I gotta do this part. Okay. So I want to get nice and light down here. All I can do is not touch the paper. show in this picture and the thing with that is to think skinny to think light and tall okay mm -hmm. I'm gonna use my eraser to soften this a little bit more right especially right above the bridge because I want my bridge to be the thing that stands out 
is all we need. So instead of thinking that tree trunks are black or brown, you'll find that most, most of the time the bark is more on the gray side anyway, is to find something like a light brown or um, a gray if you have one. Even all the better if you have a gray. I don't think I have a gray, so I'm going to have to use the light brown. Um, and you know what, if you're not sure about it, just skip it. But if you want, um, if that's important to you. And the idea is that if you looked out at the trees, you know, there might be some in the front that you would really see kind of the whole thing. And, but from this distance, you're not seeing a thousand branches, unless that's your thing. Like somebody like Bettina, who's like great at doing trees. Um, then put a lot of branches in there. But if you're not, what you're trying to do is just lightly bring some brush, to, you know, like see how I'm just holding it like this. I'm not holding it like a pencil. This way I can kind of get that fade away bit and maybe just a few places where they're just little saplings. You're not seeing the whole thing, right? Because the leaves are in the way. Mm -hmm. And some of the trees might be still bare. Maybe that's why this is so light green. And out here, they're going to be smaller and fainter, so, okay, nothing over that way. This is not something that came natural to me, for sure. Okay. Right? Am I good? Looks good. Ready to throw this, pull this, pull this baby together, the last bits of it? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Let's do the banks. And then we'll do, um, we'll follow that bridge in. Awesome. Okay, so same deal with my bank as with these trees. The thing is they're even lighter, and it also is has a little bit of, to help give it a little shape, it's a little darker down closer to the water and a little lighter up on, high, uh, um, on the rise of it, okay? I can't believe that I can even talk and remember words sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but I can sometimes. This is a little trick. Um, this was working better with my the chalk pastels, but one of the things to make it um, a green a little bit, this is another, rather than the yellow, I'm going to show you with a little orange. I don't want to go too heavy, but I'm going to put a little orange down here. And the orange is very reddish, you know, obviously it's close to red. Um, so that will help when it blends with the green to make that kind of Daphne, cute green color. Okay, so here I'm going to go a little heavier. It's a little brownish, greenish. It's kind of brownish, greenish to start with. And if I, um, yeah, I guess I can do that after this. So I want to get that lighter right up on the peak of the hill there. So I'm going to use a little more of this. If you um, want to try some other classes, they're all on YouTube. You can watch them anytime you want. Um, they're also on Facebook. Um, in the video section, you can find them all there. Almost all. I think for some reason a couple of them didn't stick. But um, And then um, it's under free drawing classes with Valerie Wallace Fine Arts. And there's... Over 30. So I don't know how much longer I'm going to do this, but I'm not stopping yet. Not just yet. So if you have something in mind that you'd like, I don't know, like me to try, let me know. Tomorrow we're doing kitty cat. The cat lovers. Mm -hmm. Although I did realize that it's kind of a yellow cat and we just did the line kind of similar, but. Well, if you love the line, then I like that. Yeah, yeah, so after you've done the, this one, you can go do the other one. All right. We were out having a bonfire burning up the brush. And by the time I came in, it took me a while to figure out what we were going to do. And I looked for a while for a good gray cat and couldn't find one, so. Or something else. I'll do another. This is a gross, this is gross, 
What? The colors? Yeah. Is it look gross? It's a little heavy. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Maybe I'll put a little now. light green on there. Yeah. I think I went with okay. the water too early. You did? Oh, yeah. No, there's not much I can do. Okay. I want to take the colors that are in my bag here, and I want to suggest those in the water. Um, I'm going to put the... So I'm just going to do it kind of like right in here. And I'm just going to sketch it in a little bit side to side. doesn't really matter what you do, but the water isn't blue. Unless the sky's blue. If you want to have blue water, then paint your sky blue. But you still, even if the sky, even if the sky's blue and the water's blue, there are still reflections of what's happening in the rest of the picture in your water. So you do want to do that. Um, and that's going to, you'll be surprised that no matter, you don't even have to do anything particularly fancy, but you just have to suggest it. Okay, and like out here, um, you know, maybe just a little of this. Okay. Alright, I, um, you know what you could do, Daphne, is use like a pencil or, um, even though it's wet. She's working with uh, watercolor pencil because then you have wet. It's mm. hard. It's all right. It's okay. Not too I'm going to use my white and my reddish brown, and then I'm going to use my dark brown. These are the things I'm going to use for the bridge. Okay? I didn't do this. So here, I'm just going to spread that around a little bit. That'll do. Oops, is it in my hand? Oh. Well, it's a beautiful day here in Maine today. It is. Still moving wood around because of all the trees fell down. They wood everywhere. All right. Um, I want to do this little second line here. I'm gonna rather than start on one side, just try to get it even. I'm gonna start right in the middle, and I'm gonna go over this way. I'm gonna go on that line. A I think it's always helpful when you get have something symmetrical to start in the middle or at least um, do a little bit on both sides at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to color this in kind of on the light side. It's that reddish, you know, it's like brick or something. This is pretty close to the right color. If you don't have this, um, you could use a little pink and a little brown. You could use a little red and a little brown. You could just color it purple, because why not? It's your picture. Or black or gray or something like that. That would all work well, too. All right. And this is kind of like, you know, if you're doing a face, but ultimately, the last thing you want to do is make sure you've highlighted or you like um, reinforced the important part of your picture. And in this case, it's the bridge. All the other stuff is supporting roles to our main character, which is the bridge. So we want to make sure we're just defining that at the end. So I'm going to put, um, I'm going to take the white, and that's going to lighten this up a little bit. Pretty close to that color. If you're in, if you're having any uh, if you're interested in like ordering some art supplies, I order from Dick Blick. Been going there for years. Kind of on like mass quantities of paper and like really big jugs of paint, that kind of thing. That's primarily what I get. Or you know a bunch of boxes of pastels. You know like things that I'll, that a lot. Um, I, I definitely recommend them. They do a great job. But if you need some help picking out some things that you might want to get, I like to go, certainly not the most expensive materials, but 
sometimes just a little tiny bit of quality or just knowing which ones to pick and you can get something really a really great buy for your money okay um, so I'm going to take this dark brown now and if you squint you can kind of see that there's a little bit of accent here I'm not going to do these poles because I don't think they come out that well this little extra bit that's here but I'm going to I'll hit this part again uh, maybe I'll even go here. All right. Um, I'm going to hit this part. And one of the things, keep in mind that, you know, if these are boulders or blocks or something like that that are making this bridge if the, if the when you do these marks right here if you do them well maybe they're maybe it's bricks or whatever but anyway keep in mind that if sometime you're drawing in like stones on the wall you want to make different little like little shapes like say you know like this kind of thing because you want to have a rock bridge or whatever keep them small because if you make them really really big um you know how would anybody have got them there you know, they can't be so big that a person couldn't move. So sometimes you just have to think about those. So like it's kind of a subliminal um, proportion thing that, you, you know, it'll read a little awkward even if you can't think of what it is. So I'm going to make these little lines. I'm going to make them relatively small. Don't, you know, don't get out a ruler and measure them. Just draw them on there. Little short little bits I've got. And it lightens up a little bit because of all the other stuff that's already on. And then um, I might just make a little mark like that. And the last thing I want to do, let me just, actually, I guess I'll do this in the charcoal one. Oh, oh so yesterday when I was doing the fish, did I already, was that two days ago or was that yeah, yesterday? yesterday? Yeah, I forgot to... The one thing I've been talking about the whole time was about how you could put this white on it, and I forgot to actually do it. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but it didn't work great anyway on the chalky pastels, trying to add the white paint on top. It would have probably worked okay on oil pastels, but yeah. um, anyway, it didn't matter, but it's kind of stupid that I talked about it. But, you know, whatever, you get what you pay for. <laughs> okay, there's that. I want to make sure this is reinforced right down here. And I want my um, reflection. So if you can do it, thinking that it curves a little bit, don't draw a line in there, okay? But just... If you can curve this a little bit or whatever, if, if you can't curve it, if that's confusing, just put a little bit of the color in the water, all right? Just on this side, though, because um, things like that, reflections and um, I have a lot of, uh, is that what I mean, reflections? I have a lot of perspective to them and the light affects it, where the sun is affects it, where you're standing affects it. So it can change. It's not really that's that's it, the the good thing, but the bad thing is that um, you can't just put them everywhere. It won't look quite right. Um, and the last thing I wanted to do was this, and that is if you want to make your grass seem like it's growing over the edge of your um, bridge a little bit, which is kind of neat. You just take this and you know get it close together. Don't like randomly put them there. But you put it right all along the edge like that. You could even do it down along the edge of the water because they haven't mowed yet this year. Because they're a leaf. Here you could do it too. Anyway, you put these little pieces that overlap here like that, and it is like really, really easy thing to do. But it creates the illusion that this bank is in front. I probably just thought fascinating when I, somebody taught me how to little things like that. It was so cool. Or saw them in somebody else's picture, or saw it from teaching people how to, you know, bridges, pictures, and stuff like that. Okay. Oops, let me do it down here. 
All right, and so tomorrow I will be back at 1 o'clock. If you're busy spending time, I don't know, doing whatever you do, or you want to get outside and enjoy the sun, you know, don't don't feel like you have to be here for the streaming. Just you can watch any time. Please share with people because that's probably the most time-consuming thing is trying to let people know that aren't seeing it all the time on my, if, you, if you're interested, then you're probably seeing it all the time, but it's not, it doesn't reach everybody. And I just want people who are looking for something to do, be able to join in. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. And I will see you tomorrow. And I will show you an up close shot so you can um be able to touch up yours don't excuse that big black big blue x in the middle because that's just showing the middle of the picture hey alicia hey megan is kara drawing and calling amy i remember your little boy boys sheila oh great sue oh sue i want to see a picture oh jessica i remember you oh my sister-in-law Hey, Matthias. Hey, Holly. Hey, Ruby. Hey, Veronica. Okay, see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.